I think the first long-term studies are coming out about the effects of um, you know, long-term um, internet usage, mobile usage on mood, on relationships. Um, so that, that's, that's uh, already being documented. I, I'm not sure we're going to uh, switch direction anytime soon. Um, frankly, I don't know how much more time we could spend staring at screens, but um, it seems inevitable. Initially, I thought it was a great way to learn about Asia. Nine years later, I'm still here, still learning. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but I've always had a feeling that I wanted to contribute and kind of challenge a conventional wisdom about how the world kind of works and what we should be doing better, you know, as a society. Um, and so GIFT is a platform for that. Um, we've done a few projects related to technology, but um, it's, it's well beyond. I mean, it's food, it's, you know, water and sanitation, it's housing, healthcare, um, yeah. When you talk about technology in your projects, what kind of technology do you mean? Well, it, it, no, I mean, inevitably, I mean, if you talk about, um, you know, internet, mobile, new technologies, inevitably those are coming into almost every project we do, whether it's a mobile app for farming, uh, improving agriculture. Um, in fact, we had one which was essentially an Uber for emergency response in India. Um, but many of the te technologies are much more basic. Uh, so we were in Cambodia last week, um, and the technology there was processing coconut in essentially a low-tech fashion, but was promoting employment. Yeah. So technology is embedded right through our projects. New technology, mobile, etc., is increasingly coming in as well. When you think of the more disruptive technologies like AI, do you think they help? developing countries? I, I'm actually very, uh, uh, I guess, concerned, uh, very pessimistic about how these technologies will affect um, developing and underdeveloped uh, economies. I feel the, uh, the leverage, financial leverage, um, is going to be even more extreme. I think um, Just from what I've seen about how algorithms are influencing our lives in the developed world, which essentially create, in my view, more transactional mindsets and limit our behavioral responses and flexibility, I think when that is, you know, imposed on the underdeveloped world, I think it's going to be, uh, yeah, you know, cause for concern. How so? Well, you know, um, already, if you just look at, you know, smallholder farmers, um, not even talk about poverty, but those who work informally, um, essentially live hand to mouth, they are already uh, squeezed within global supply chains. I believe that um, algorithms, new technologies is only going to uh, make that more severe. Uh, the you know, the, the plight uh, of, 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 of poor people. I don't, I mean, there is a narrative around connecting the world, right? I mean, Facebook's big thing is let's give everybody internet. Um, they will, you know, miraculously become entrepreneurs, access to information. And I mean, on one level that's true, but um, against the backdrop of not having infrastructure, um, it's, it's not going to help. I mean, um, 65 million families in India, uh, in the rural sector alone, live in houses which are not secure. They're essentially um, prone to, to destruction by weather, uh, you know, severe weather. Uh, they're porous. Um, they don't provide safe, uh, secure shelter. So you bring internet into that, okay, it helps on one level, but it's not going to promote the kind of economic development that, that people think. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's a simple advertising, um, you know, eyeballs equals revenue. Um, and again, there is, I don't want to be completely dismissive of the, the benefits that come with having access to information, but I think the narrative is too simplistic. 
you know, uh, because uh, without the basics, uh, it's very difficult, uh, if not impossible. It's fundamentally an infrastructure challenge and um, an economic development challenge. But people need housing, you know, they need clean and safe food. They need water and sanitation systems. There's no internet technology that is going to build uh, toilets and treat sewage. No internet company is going to uh, grow food. It can help, right? It, you, know, it, you know, everyone talks about precision agriculture and, and things like that. It can help, but um, people need the basics. Again, it, coming back to India, um, the, the estimates are 300 million people uh, don't have electricity in, in India. 300 million. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's 200 million. It's still, <laughs> it's still an outrageous number. Uh, again, the housing that I mentioned previously, um, 65 million families, which is somewhere around 300 plus million people, don't have a solid home, you know, um, and, and the list goes on. Do you think the companies who promise to change the world with their technology, do you think they know about its adverse effects? No, I, I think they believe it. I think they believe it. I think that that is their mission. I think it's, you know, deeply ingrained. But again, um, I, I, I feel that the awareness of what the world is really like is quite limited uh, in Silicon Valley. Um, I know because I talk to people there and they ask me very strange questions uh, about, um, about Asia. Uh, there, I think there's, a, there's really not um, uh, any real understanding of, of what the world is like. I mean, from, a, um, from, from a, a socioeconomic point of view, from an infrastructure point of view, and uh, in a way, it's very difficult, you know? Um, you, you have to go out and see it and spend time in it, and that's not the world they live in. So I do think they believe that they're helping. And uh, let's see. Um, I, I, again, I, I'm not optimistic. What are the main issues with rolling out these consumer technologies in the developing world? There's other things that need to be addressed first. And then there is the, um, the dynamic that is created with the technologies. Um, the owners of technology and the users uh, of technology. And I, I feel the economic leverage is getting to a point now where it's very difficult for people to be able to raise themselves up. And frankly, the universal basic income discussion, um, you know, that might work in Europe, in maybe in the US, it's not gonna work in India. It's not gonna work in China. So people need jobs, they need, you know, and, and furthermore, just, I mean, people need to be productive, you know? They need purpose and, 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 and work. Um, so as that is reduced, I think it's going to, to cause big problems in, in, in the underdeveloped, you know, developing world. What kind of problems? Well, I think you're gonna have large um, populations of people who, with, with no work, with nothing to do. And uh, we know that, um, People who are, um, you know, uh, sitting idly uh, generally, uh, you know, cause trouble. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like a utopian ideal where everyone is just relaxing and <laughs> sitting around enjoying life, you know. Um, idle, idle people, uh, are, are, it's, not a good, it's not a recipe for, for success. You know, and I think, you know, um, I talk to Uber drivers when I'm in um, the U.S., when I take Uber, because actually in a city like San Francisco, it has positively transformed the city. I used to live in San Francisco, and it's a nightmare uh, getting taxis. At that time, you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was a nightmare getting taxis. Um, hills make it not easy to, to walk everywhere. Um, but, you know, just in my brief conversations with Uber drivers, I, I can sense that their, um, their behavioral options are limited. So in a way, they don't enjoy the benefits of full employment, right? The social uh, safety nets of full employment. And yet they are 
um, in a way subservient to the algorithm. They have to answer the call. Uh, you know, Airbnb is the same. If you rent your house on Airbnb, you you have to follow their their, their rules, and it's becoming increasingly um, stringent. You you know you 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 have to um, agree to the instant book, otherwise your listing doesn't show up. And I think when you again when you apply those those principles in um, people who are poor who already um, don't have options, it it you know like I said I think it's going to be I think it's going to be trouble. I think governments need to, to set policies in the interest of their people rather than in the technology companies. Um, and, and, and yeah, first and foremost, that is, you know, giving people productive, uh, gainful employment. Um, it's part of the fabric of society. And it's not just economic, it's, 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 um, it's a social uh, activity uh, as well, right? So... Um, People, you know, I don't think I don't think we as human beings um, should be isolated from each other, and I think work provides a social environment, you know, friendships, um, purpose, meaning in life, and so you know, I'm not suggesting that there will be riots, right? And but I think psychologically, I think it 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 limits. Um, our, our human experience, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I uh, again, I don't know how uh, the algorithms will play out. Uh, I think the other the other real real issue is um, the addictive nature uh, of our devices. I mean, I remember going back to 2010 here in Hong Kong, and um, you know, here in our office, we we kind of talk about it a lot. And I remember first seeing smartphones enter the market and the penetration as it kind of accelerated. And I remember, you know, uh, 2010, 2011, thinking mm, 20%, 30% of people in the MTR, in the, in the subway, were on their devices. And that was kind of interesting. And then I, I distinctly remember when it got up to about 50%. I mean, I would count people in the subway. And now it's, it's 100%, 90%. You know, and I think um, even even the the engineers uh, of of the platforms of the apps have come out now, started to come out and talk about the addictive qualities um, of, of the apps. So that is uh, again, um, I mean, it's a very simple model uh, of keeping eyeballs on the screen for the advertising revenue, but is that? the kind of society we, we want to live in? I, I don't think so. I think, you know, we have to be very careful about that. What kind of impacts do you see on society by these digital consumer technologies? I mean, you already mentioned, you know, that, that they're addictive, but... Well, that's already proven. I mean, that's not an opinion, right? I mean, there's already now, the, I think the first long-term studies are coming out about the effects of... Um, you know, long-term um, internet usage, mobile usage, on mood, on relationships. Um, so that that's that's uh, already being documented. I, I'm not sure we're going to uh, switch direction anytime soon. Um, frankly, I don't know how much more time we could spend staring at screens, but um, it seems inevitable. Um, and again, it's not popular to talk about regulation um, in, this, in this area. But I, I think that we're going to see, I think maybe it's already even happening, um, you know, um, cellular uh, dead zones, uh, restaurants, hotels. Um, I've thought for a long time in a crowded place like Hong Kong, there should be um, specific uh, places on the sidewalk uh, where people who are looking at their device must stand. You, you know, you, you should not be allowed to be walking, you know, in motion, staring at your screen, because just like driving, it causes accidents. People have, have been hit by cars, right? So that's, that's a very basic uh, measure. But I think as, as uh, it becomes more and more um, part of our lives, we will need other measures um, to essentially retain um, 
kind of um, our, our, our thinking skills, right? Because I, I, I really feel that, um, you know, quiet time with a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, um, that promotes thinking, particularly in, in, in young people. Um, staring at your screen, scrolling through, you know, endless uh, kind of feeds uh, doesn't, right? You're receiving the information rather than thinking and putting ideas down on paper. So I, I don't know how you regulate that, um, you know, beyond personal discipline. But I think, um, you know, there, 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 must, be, there must be limits uh, on that. I think the, the bigger risk is not robots becoming more like humans and taking our job. It's humans becoming more like robots, which is, you know, what I've been talking about. The, the transactional mindsets, the lack of empathy, which comes from human contact, the um, lack of conceptual thinking and critical thinking that comes from just digesting uh, material, right? So th I think that is a bigger risk than robots taking our jobs, personally. I think we're, we're acting like children when it comes to our devices, you know? We're still in that kind of infant phase where, you know, we're, we're kind of, um, we're, we're just uh, enchanted uh, by the devices and we're not using them critically yet. And maybe there, maybe the apps will evolve, the platforms will evolve in a way that allow us to, to better use them. I feel that we're still in a, in a very infant uh, phase with how we use devices. You know, the fact that Google and Facebook are, you know, two of the kind of most highly valued companies, and they're essentially advertising companies. Of course, they do things, right? I mean, search is um, extremely valuable. Um, Facebook has a lot of, you know, useful um, uh, properties as well, but they, they essentially advertise products to us. And I, I think that's rather simplistic. Then if you talk about the extent uh, to which we're just consuming uh, resources and throwing things away and the kind of externalities of overconsumption, then the advertising companies are, are culpable. Um, so I think, I think history will look back on this period um, as a, um, you know, completely uh, reckless and unethical period uh, which was aided and abetted by the most valuable companies in the world. I mean, Alibaba is now the premier example uh, of that, right? I mean, in a way, it, it really does a great service to SMEs, um, not just in China, but around the world. But promoting relentless consumption through the apps and, you know, one click and then here it is, uh, I believe is, is hugely irresponsible, hugely. And, and it can't continue uh, because we're already hitting limits uh, to, to resources. I really believe that, um, you know, the world is, is big and rich and wonderful. And I think that the designers, the developers, the inventors um, need to sort of understand that and embed the richness of the world within their technologies. I'm not sure that's happening yet. Um, and particularly when we talk about artificial intelligence and as algorithms become more sophisticated and they become, you know, ever closer to us, right? Um, maybe even, you know, uh, invasive, right? Um, I think we're at risk of limiting ourselves, and I really hope that um, everything from history, to culture, ideology is um, used as the inputs, right? I think we need a vast um, data set, if I can use that right word, and not just, um, you know, a narrow set of ideologies that inform both the creation uh, of the devices and also the, the input 
uh, upon which artificial intelligence works, right? I mean, it's, it's basically processing um, the inputs that it's given. And, you know, there's people now talking about um, inherent racism um, in artificial intelligence. But I think more, perhaps more insidious, is just a very narrow perspective on the world and a narrow conception, a narrow ideology, which um, I, I hope that can be um, expanded, right, to include the richness uh, of the world. Maybe I've come across as overly pessimistic, but when I see people and how it's, you know, affecting them, uh, and even myself, and I, and I, and I, I reflect on my own behaviors, that's, that's quite scary. So I, I'm under no illusion that I also am addicted to the device, right? And I have to, you know, take steps to, just like the Facebook, I mean, the, not, not just Facebook, but the, the engineers who are deleting Facebook off their phone, right? Um, yeah, so I, 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 hope, I hope we can um, learn to use these technologies uh, more responsibly. I really uh, wish that the the direction that artificial intelligence goes in uh, will help people be better humans and not uh, the opposite. <laughs>